Section two of the Anzac Book. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Editor's Note from the Anzac Book, edited by C. E. W. Bean. This book of Anzac was produced in the lines at Anzac on Gallipoli in the closing weeks of 1915. Practically every word in it was written and every line drawn beneath the shelter of a waterproof sheet or of a roof of sandbags either in the trenches or at most well within the range of the oldest turkish rifle and under daily visitations from the smallest turkish field piece day and night during the whole process of its composition the crack of the mauser bullets overhead never ceased at least one good soldier that we know of who was preparing a contribution for these pages met his death while the work was still unfinished the anzac book was to have been a new year magazine to help this little british australasian fraternity in turkey to while away the long winter in the trenches the idea originated with major s s butler of the anzac staff on his initiative and that of lieutenant h e woods a small committee was formed to father the magazine the notice was circulated on november fourteenth calling for contributions from the whole population of anzac any profit was to go to patriotic funds for the benefit of the army corps between november fifteenth and december eighth when the time for the sending in of contributions closed the anzac book was produced as drawings and paintings began to come in disclosing the whereabouts of some of the talent which existed in anzac a small staff of artists was collected in order to produce head and tail pieces and a few illustrations and a dugout overlooking anzac cove became the office of the only book ever likely to be produced in gallipoli it was after the contributions had been finally sent in and when the work of editing was in full swing that there came upon most of us from the sky the news that anzac was to be evacuated such finishing touches as remained to be added after december nineteenth were given to the work in embrose the date for this publication was necessarily delayed and it was realized by every one that this production which was to have been a mere pastime had now become a hundred times more precious as a souvenir certainly no book has ever been produced under these conditions before except for this modification in the scheme of its production the anzac book remains to-day exactly the same as when it was planned for the australian and new zealand army corps still clinging to the familiar holly clothed sides of sahri bear the three weeks during which this book was being produced will be remembered by the men of anzac as being the period during which we were visited by the two fiercest storms which had descended upon the peninsula during the afternoon of november seventeenth the wind from the southwest gradually increased to more than half a gale and brought with it after dark a most torrential thunderstorm a day or two later this subsided leaving a dishevelled anzac but the wind swung slowly round to the north and by november twenty seventh it was blowing a northerly blizzard and the next day five out of every six australians for the first time in their lives woke to find a white countryside in the snow falling how deeply that snow impressed them can be seen in these pages for dust heat and flies were much more typical of gallipoli the book was composed from first to last in the full prospect of christmas at anzac and it remains a record perhaps all the more interesting on that account the printing section of the royal engineers especially lieutenant tuck and corporal ashwin and lieutenant g l thompson r n a s and certain naval officers helped us with some drawing paper ink and paints and the photographic section with some excellent panoramas but for the rest the contributors had to work with such materials as anzac contained iodine brushes red and blue pencils and such approach to white paper as could be produced from each battalion stationary the response to the committee's request for contributions was enormous and in consequence the editors have been able to use only portions even if they be half or a quarter of the longer articles and stories submitted to them but they have done this without hesitation rather than reject the articles altogether the competitions for certain contributions resulted as follows cover private d barker fifth australian field ambulance drawing trooper w o hewitt 
ninth australian white horse drawing a comic private c lation white sixth australian field ambulance pro sketch h dinning ninth company australian a s c prose humorous second lieutenant j e g stevenson second field company australian engineers versus captain james sprent third australian field ambulance versus humorous t h wilson a company sixteenth battalion a i f the greater number of the contributors were private soldiers in the army corps the sole outside contribution is mr edgar wallace's poetic tribute to the australian and new zealand force which is included in these pages with the consent of the author the thanks of those particularly concerned in the production are especially due to general birdwood for his close and constant interest to brigadier general c b b white who though at the time burdened with most anxious duties never failed to give some of his few spare moments to the solving of difficulties incidental to this publication to the commonwealth authorities and the publicity department in london and particularly to mr h c smart for his untiring assistance invaluable advice and for the help of his outstanding ingenuity and in organization and of the splendid business system and abundant facilities which he has created in the australian military office in london to the war office and the admiralty and the central news for permission to use valuable photographs and to many others both in the a n n z army corps and outside it who have given their best help to make this book a success for the staff c e w bean editor privates f crozier t coles d barker w o hewitt c lachon white artist a w baisley clerk the work has been a labor of love for which only they realize how little thanks they deserve this from the anzac book staff a g n c december twenty ninth nineteen fifteen end of section two